And what's happening is that you all are growing up. You are going to go off to a place that's filled with adult privileges, freedoms, and responsibilities when you go off to college. And the question to think about is how are you doing on the inside? Are you ready to handle those kinds of opportunities and privileges as an adult? In this session, there's three things that I want to suggest that will help you become the right person and wear these big shoes. And those three things are that you're going to need a badge, you're going to need some guts, and you're going to need a mask. So let's figure out how this is going to work on becoming um, a person who can wear those big shoes. All right. First thing that you're going to need, like I said, is the idea of having a badge. So really, the idea behind that is the idea of having personal authority in your life. So the little line that you're looking for is the idea of authority, OK? To have a badge means to have personal authority. We need to understand, letter A, that God wants you to be in charge of your life. He's made it to where he wants to see you take ownership and be in charge of what's going on inside of your life, all right? Would someone read for us? There's a uh, passage right there in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Would someone read that for us? Just take that initiative. Thank you. Actually, it's in your notes if you want to read it in your notes. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 16. All right. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Paul was writing this letter to this church in Ephesus, and you can tell by his answer, they're probably going like, all right, now, who are you guys again, and why do you always come to our place, and there's different one of you guys, and you're all, who, who, now, who are you? What do you do? He said, look, God's put all of us in your life, some in different roles, for one purpose. Look down through your notes. Right in the middle there, it says, it's the idea to become mature. Do you see that? He said that God has put all these spiritual leaders in your life for one reason, to become mature. Find that phrase and circle it, become mature. And what Paul does is he contrasts this idea by saying that we are to no longer be infants. Would you find that line and underline that? So God wants us to grow up. He doesn't want us to stay infants in our faith. And look how he describes the idea of being an infant. They're tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching. It's kind of like if you ever saw that movie Forrest Gump, you know? You know, Mama. I don't know if I'm supposed to have a destiny like Lieutenant Dan or if I'm like floating along in the breeze like a feather. What's my destiny, Mama? You know, remember that? He says what happens is kids are pushed around. Kids are gullible. And he says, I don't want you to be prey to the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Some of you are going to go to a college where there are people on the faculty who really believe it's their responsibility to separate you from your Christian worldview. They think that your view of the world is archaic and you need to be enlightened. And what Paul is saying is that God wants you to grow up. He wants us to grow up and not be infants, but become mature. My son Jack, like I said, is kind of sandwiched right between a couple of girls. And so there's a way in which he and I connect more because we're the only guys in the family. And a lot of times Jack likes to imitate what I'm doing. I remember one time we were working on this kitchen remodel project and we're laying down the sub flooring and he's got his little plastic hammer and he's trying to drive these nails. The guy's getting nowhere, but you know, he's having fun beating on him. Another time he wanted to shave with me. So I got Jack all loaded up with shaving cream and everything and then I had him, handed him his Mach 7 razor and he's cutting his face and he's bleeding. It was really cute. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. That's horrible. Of course I didn't do that. Gosh, that's, what kind of dad would I be? I gave him his little Scooby-Doo razor. So he took his little Scooby-Doo razor, and Jack is shaving like this. He puts his hand right here, and he starts shaving. Now, the reason he's doing that is because when I shave, I put my hand right here. And I don't know why I put my hand right there. I think it's maybe to feel the muscles, the manliness, the hugeness. Oh, look, I've got the pectoral muscle. When I move my arm here, it feels huge and bulging. Yeah. It's a little bit of the hair, maybe a furry guy. Yeah. So, so Jack is shaving like this. I don't know why, but I do that. Well, one of the things that we like to do in our family was to play the crocodile hunter. And how that basically worked was that I was the crocodile hunter, and our kids absolutely loved Steve Irwin, totally missed him when he left. It was horrible. 
But we would play it, and the idea was that as the crocodile hunter, I would chase all the kids throughout the house. And if I found them, I would bring them back to the zoo, which was the bath, okay? Now, if I caught them, they had to help me catch the other kids and bring them back. So my oldest was the, the little Sheila, Jack was the little booger, and our youngest, Sydney, was the, the little Joey. Now, I told the kids to all go out and hide. And what's great is that when kids are ready, if you ever have kids, you'll see this someday. But when they're ready, they go, okay, Dad, we're ready, which totally gives away where they're hiding. It's awesome. <laughs> so I know exactly where they are. And so when it was time for them to start, I said, okay, are you guys ready? Because here I come. And then I'd start out like this. All right, mates, I'm the crocodile hunter. And I'm looking for the little bigger, the little Sheila, and the little Joey. And I know you got huge, sharp, dangerous, pointy fangs. They got venom that is dangerous. It can kill me instantly. But I've got the anti-venom in my back pocket, so I'm not worried about you, mates. And I come up to my little son, who's three years old. And I, All right, I got you, little bigger. Now you got to help me find your sisters, right, mate? And my three-year-old son, in his best little Australian, goes, right, mate. Oh, it was awesome. Because he just loved playing light or wrong. That's what kids are like. But it's the same part of kids that scares me to death. Because my sons and my son and my daughter could be out on a playground somewhere, and someone could walk up to them with a picture of a puppy and say, I've lost my puppy. Will you come and help me find him? You see, kids are gullible. And they might just go with this guy because they're gullible. And Paul is saying that God wants us to grow up. He doesn't want us to be gullible. He wants us to take charge of our life. He wants you to be in charge of your life. 